and welcome back to TGTV, and more specifically, welcome back to my flat. No, this isn't an advert, this is a video about my 996, and just in response to a lot of questions that you guys and girls have been asking me all about the 996. So, it's a nice sunny day, I'm going to go for a drive, and I'm going to answer as many questions as possible, and talk all things 996. I'm also on my way somewhere relatively special to do with the 996 and some work I'm getting done with it. So let's go down to the car park, hop in the 996, stop saying 996, and go for a drive. Join me in the 996 then. I've been wanting to make this video for about a week now. I've had the car for about a week. Uh, and even before collecting it, I wanted to get on record why I've got this car uh, and everything to do with the purchase decision, uh, why I like these so much, why I think they're such a good idea to buy, uh, my plans for the car and all the rest of it. How you doing? Yeah, here we are. Uh, yeah, it's chaos. This car causes chaos. I make 996s great again i have started the hashtag on instagram as well uh the sun's shining i'm excited basically i've had too much caffeine the sun's out my sunroof is open and i'm out in the 996 causing chaos so currently then you actually join me on the way to acton coachworks I am taking the 996 there because I'm getting the front end uh, sprayed up. I'm getting the plate taken off, the plinth taken off, uh, the bolt holes in the front bumper sprayed up, um, and everything basically just smoothed off and removing the whole uh, front plate set up completely. That is where I'm off to right now, and there'll be a video on that process, and there's some other bits on the bodywork that I'm gonna get resprayed as well. Basically, this car I'm going to treat almost as a, as a project, I'm going to put it back to as good as, if not better than brand new. It is a 17 year old car, so there are signs of wear and use, which is endearing, I like it, um, and by no means do I care. Um, Four Star Classics prepared the car really, really nicely. Um, the paintwork was in amazing condition. It was swell free, it had been through a detailers, all the rest of it. Um, there is, it hasn't had PPF though, as most cars of this age haven't. Um, so there is some marks of uh, gravel rash bound around the rear quarters, which most Porsches suffer from, um, which I intend to get sprayed up. Uh, and obviously the front end needs doing as well. So I'm taking to Act Acton Coachworks. They're a brilliant, brilliant bunch. They're actually school lane in Acton which is next to the massive uh, HRN service center if you're, if you're from around there. And if you're not from the UK or even London, then most of that will be of no relevance. But if you're in the market for some uh, bodywork spraying and all the rest of it, Acton Coachworks are great. And there'll be a separate video on that, the process and all the rest of it. So that'll be coming to the channel. But that's where I'm off to today. So then back to the topic in hand then, why on earth did I buy a 996? Because I got so many of you saying, you should have bought a 993, you idiot. Or, you know, the 996 isn't a classic. Or, you should have bought a 964 or anything basically other than 996. And people saying the, the, go on, get on with it, you scamp. People saying the 996 is ugly and all the rest of it. Now, oh, my indicator's been on for quite some time. I do apologize. So then, I happen to think the 996 is a very, very good looking car. I know I obviously would say that, I've spent money on one, um, but I think it's super, super cool. I remember when this came out, when I was a, a young lad, probably not that young because I am actually quite old. Um, I was a, probably a teenager? Maybe not actually, maybe not that old. But I remember the 996 coming out and it was a departure from the Porsches of old, which all had oval headlights and they've since gone back to oval headlights. This is the only generation in the Porsche 911 range which has uh, a departure from the oval headlight anyway. And during that era, they actually had the GT1 car, the uh, one Le Mans, which was chaos and that had those new uh, headlights which is cool and then obviously the the Le Mans racing cars and all the, all the rest of it they all went back to the normal headlights and then they brought out the 919 and whatever which are no longer oval um but 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 the front end on this car reminds me of that super super cool GT1 car uh of its era the race winning car it was unbelievable and then the back of the car is probably my favorite bit of all 
the wide haunches and that strip in the middle just looks so, so good. And the vents underneath the rear quarters, it's just unbelievable. And it still looks good to this day, still looks so good. I don't think there's been a rear end on a 911, uh, non-GT product that looks as good as this car does. Looks aside though, it's four wheel drive. It's a 3.6 liter, flat six, naturally aspirated engine. It makes that lovely uh, old school raspy Porsche noise. Now it's not, um, it's not a Metzger engine or any of this nonsense. It's not some sort of like, years gone by engine like uh, air cooled or whatever it is right it's not one of those it's just a nice bog standard 911 engine the kind of workhorse 911 engine it just sounds good it's completely bulletproof bar the IMS thing um, which I've done I mean I touched on it in my last video but the IMS has been sorted out it's been uprated to the 997 one by a, a specialist during its Porsche history um, so it's fine it's fine it's fine it's fine waffling aside then I think these are a very, very good buy. These are between 25 and 30 grand for a nice one. Um, so this has got 50,000 miles on it, which for a 17 year old car isn't much at all. It has got full, absolutely comprehensive history. Uh, the previous owner actually uh, turns out, <laughs> turns out I kind of know who he is and it showed from the history and the condition of the car that he's been meticulous about this car. He's owned it much in the same way that I'm going to own this car. Uh, I'm gonna own it in a kind of uh, enthusiast kind of way. I'm going to pretty much restore it and just look after it as best I can because this is a car that I'm gonna hold on to long, long term. And if I do miss services or I don't, uh, or if I try and cut costs in maintaining it, it's gonna bite me in the bum down the line five ten years down the line you're gonna get a big bill because you've you've been silly with it and you've tried to cut a corner so it's all gonna be OEM parts it's all gonna be specialist and Porsche work done on it I'm gonna look after it properly I'm gonna let it warm up every time I'm gonna turn the key let uh, the fluids uh, measure themselves and all that kind of nonsense and and really really do my best to keep this car in my possession in one piece and kind of looked after and now that is not to say I'm not gonna drive it and I think these cars actually benefit from being driven uh, and used regularly as opposed to just stuffing it away in the corner and putting a cover on it. I think you need to be wary of cars like this and obviously older cars that have got super, super low miles that haven't been driven. Um, I think they actually benefit from being driven, getting some miles on the clock and services being put on and, and going through the mileage. So I thought 50K was about where I wanted to be on it. Any less and it starts getting a bit suspicious in terms of, uh, in terms of clocking as well. Um, super low miles cars, with really cracked seats. Um, it does rain, raise some alarm bells. Um, the mileage on this seems legit. I looked through all the services, the history, everything like that. It seems like it's been built up over time and, and everything makes sense. Um, but going back to what I was saying on the price wise, these are about 25, 30K, which isn't a huge amount of money for an iconic 911 in the 911 range. If you look at whatever, other 911s have done in the past, the 993, the 964, um, all the rest of the other models, even the ones that weren't even particularly popular, they are all going up through the roof. And the 996 Turbo actually, which so many people have told me to buy, or I should have bought, they are about double the price of these. So if you want a nice 996 Turbo, which basically looks the same, but it's got a wing on it and obviously a turbo, um, they're about 50K. Um, and I remember when they were 25K and these were about 20. Um, so they've shot off. And this is gonna this is gonna follow. I don't suspect it'll probably get to 50k anytime soon, but I don't see there's any reason why this can't get to 35, 40k in the next couple of years. Um, I know certainly a few of my friends are now buying one of these because they just represent great value. And driving wise, there's not a huge amount in it between if if you blindfolded me and put me in this car and said drive around in it, you know, ignore the feel of the steering wheel or whatever, what year 911 you in? you wouldn't really know bar the noise and you can obviously tell it's not turboed um, you wouldn't really be able to tell much between this and my 911t it doesn't feel ropey at all there's no rattles there's no squeaks everything feels like it's completely um still bolted together properly which i i would hope that's terrible driving absolutely terrible from you sir yeah so i'm absolutely amazed i thought i'd get in it and just think oh this is this is a crap box i i don't want to drive this anymore it's hell there's squeaks there's rattles it feels like things are just kind of like thrown together but it feels unbelievable everything is just so direct still um it's obviously four-wheel drive it's just great and it's quick as well porsche are renowned for kind of underselling their values and underselling the uh performance of their cars 
whilst this is actually down on power, even on the 911T, which is the basic engine in the range, it still feels quick. It obviously doesn't have that turbo boost and that torque, um, but there's no flat spots in the acceleration. Everything is just, I, I couldn't be more impressed, to be honest with you, with this car. And I would advise if anyone wants one, go and test drive one, go and get in one, and I guarantee you'll love it. You'll think, yeah, why on earth not? Finance wise then, if you are to finance one of these, if you want to finance one, um, I would say they're on the cusp of what most finance companies will lend on. Certainly Mr. Gibson, um, the guy that does all my car finance, um, he will only lend on cars at about 25, 30K. So they're on the cusp of you actually being able to finance them as well. So something like this, I would ordinarily just cash buy um, because it's the price of, I don't know, an expensive watch, I would say, and I, I don't finance watches. Um, but if you were to finance one, I would imagine you'd have to put in maybe 3K and you'd be paying, I don't know, between 250 and 400 a month, maybe something like that. And the cool thing actually about financing one of these would be, I would say this car will probably appreciate between five and 10% value wise a year. Um, so that will probably cover the interest on your finance as well. So if you're after free motoring and you buy one of these that has been looked after, has full history and you buy from a nice dealer um, that you'll get some sort of, uh, some sort of warranty on, I, th this is free motoring and you might end up enjoying two, three, four years of 911 ownership and actually making some money at the end. Um, so yeah, this isn't a car that I've bought to flip and make money on. Um, if I did, it would be, it'd be five grand over the course of a few years. It's, it's not worth doing as an investment, I don't think. Uh, personally, it's not worth uh, the storage costs for me, the fuel, the insurance and blah, blah, blah. Going on to the actually, the insurance side of things, I have just insured this for, I think it was 500 quid for the year. I will leave the insurance details below uh, who I've actually insured it with. But yeah, 500 quid for the year. I mean, it's just bonkers because these aren't cars that really get nicked. They're not really cars that boy racers get and thrash them. So they come under kind of quite a civilized insurance heading risk-wise. So yeah, all in all, so far, pretty good news. It's not really drinking fuel either. I know fuel economy is of no relevance to me or many of you either, um, but it, it seems to be okay. Around town as well, people saying, oh, you know, you bought a manual, you're an idiot. Uh, why don't you buy the Tiptronic? Uh, I love manual cars. I think most of my cars now are manual, bar the F12 and the SV, um, which actually need paddles, really. There's too much power. You don't want to be battering through the gears with 750 on brake horsepower, it's just stupid. Um, the tip, the Tiptronic box isn't great. My friend Hugh, he has a 996, an oak green metallic, and I'll get that car on the channel soon. He has a Tiptronic, he brought it around Europe. He said it was good for cruising and wafting, but as soon as you start getting on it, the Tiptronic box can be a bit indecisive and a bit of a wally. So the six speed manual was the only option for me. I only filtered when I was looking for these for the manual box. Um, that's not to say that don't get one in Tiptronic. It's quite a reliable box, it's fine. And if you want something just to waft in, um, then you can. But yeah, the manual I would say would probably appreciate better. Manual 911s over, over time have always done a lot better. Christ. Driving this around town then, what's it like? It's actually, it's good. The clutch is not too heavy, it's not too long. Um, it's got a nice weight to it, a very nice spring to it. It's easy peasy to drive around town. The, the bike point is absolutely fine. It's just great. I'm really, really impressed with it. Hold on, where am I going? I haven't stalled this once. I've had it a week uh, and I do stall cars because I get from get into so many different cars with so many different bike points, so many different clutches, and I haven't stalled it. I think you can pretty much just creep off just on a bit of clutch. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know. I know obviously I'm excited, I'm bigging it up because it's a new car. I'm trying to think of downsides, stuff that I don't like. Um, potentially actually in here, there's some signs of wear. Um, and you can kind of smell that sort of it's it's been it's been around the block a few times. Um, nothing the bit of Febreze can't sort out. Uh, but again, the stench might just be me. I don't know. On the grey leather, there are some little sort of scrapes and some scratches. And if anyone watching knows what to do about that, or if there's anything that I can do to um, rectify that, then do let me know. Oh, this is chaos. Hammersmith Broadway is carnage. Um, but yeah, visibility in here as well just uh, touching on something that's very current right now. Visibility in here is excellent. It's just a 911. You can see out of everything. It's not too wide, despite the wide arch kit. It's just, ah, uh, it's brilliant. I, 
I don't know what to say. But if you're thinking of buying one, just buy one. They are brilliant. And I'm getting some odd looks. I'm talking to myself. Don't worry, I'm just, just a YouTuber, everyone. Nothing to see. Just trying to make some ad sense, okay? Just trying to pay for the Porsche. Also, I hope there's not too much noise, but this sunroof is a, is a lovely drop. I do enjoy that. Uh, the sun's coming in and it works as well. I think that's the thing with Porsche as well. If you bought a Ferrari from this era, um, I'd probably have the steering wheel off in my hand right now. Um, can you imagine, here we go, here, here's, here's an idea. Can you imagine what McLarens are going to be like when they're 17 years old? Can you imagine a 720S that is 17 years old? That'll literally be like chitty chitty bang bang, is that a thing? With the wheels falling off and just everything just literally disintegrating. I mean, they do that after two weeks, let alone, okay, I need to leave McLaren alone, I'm sorry. Sorry everyone. I know I get bashed relentlessly on McLaren forums. People endlessly, endlessly, endlessly saying I'm a no um, I am a But hey, what can you do? What can you do? If you're not happy with the product, then uh, say something. At least I'm honest on this channel. And like, uh, no. So then I'm nearing Acton Coachworks then. I'm gonna sign out the video once I get there and I'll show you guys um, the setup there. But there's gonna be a full video on the paint process and the stuff that I'm going to do to this car. I'm planning on potentially some uh, interior stuff in here, some sympathetic like mods and stuff, but there won't be a silly exhaust system. If there is, it'll be maybe in the OEM PSE exhaust. Um, it's all going to be kept very, very tasteful, um, which for an SV owner, you might be surprised to hear. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm into my kind of rest and mod stuff, so we shall see. And I want to tackle a final thing as well. I've had so many people telling me this isn't a classic car. I don't know what constitutes a classic technically. Is it 25 years old or more? I think it's more of a kind of opinion based thing. If I think it's a classic, then it is. Um, if it's not a classic now, it will be in the next few years. So yeah, I'm gonna to continue to call it a classic. It's a classic as far as I'm concerned. So shut up. Let me out, please, thank you. So I have now dropped the 996 at Acton Coachworks. That's Acton, uh, that's Acton Coachworks behind me. Um, and I will be updating everyone on exactly what is going on with the car very, very soon. They will have it for about a week or so and it's getting some bits and bobs tidied on it. And that's going to be a separate video. I'll go into that because I like stuff like that. And I will be uh, churning some AdSense on that as well. I'm in Acton anyway, as the name may suggest. And I'm actually next door to HRO and Service Centre here on School Road. Uh, it's literally just over here actually. Oh, bloody hell. One second, look at this. There's a gate here, I don't want to be uh, snooping too much. Where you've got some mental stuff here, absolutely mental. And there's an SV over there, I can see the wing already. Over in the back, can't really see it. Uh, but there's all sorts going on, and there's even, there's a Veyron in the wash bay. All very cool. But anyway, I just thought I would uh, do a video updating everyone on the 996, give you my plans for the car, and also just go through exactly what I'm having done to it, and why I bought one. Hopefully that answers a lot of questions. If you've got any more questions, by all means, do get in the comments, get on my Instagram, and go and check it all out and all the rest of it. Anyway, do subscribe, thumbs up, and I'll see you all very, very soon. Bye.